All right. For those of you who have seen the movie Moneyball or read the book by Michael Lewis, you'll be familiar with the story of Billy Bean. Billy was supposed to be a tremendous ball player. All the scouts told him so. They told his parents that they thought he was going to be a star. But what actually ended up happening is that when he signed his contract, he ended up struggling quite a bit. He got traded multiple times and ended up in the minors for most of his career. So, and he eventually ended up in management. He became the man manager of the Oakland A's. So, for most of you in this room, ending up in management is seen as a success. But for a kid trying to make it in the MLB, ending, ending up in management is a far cry from success. Rather, it's a failure. And that's what I want to talk to you guys about today, is that our healthcare system, our medical system, is almost just as bad as predicting what happened to the patients in it as the scouts were at predicting what happened to Billy Bean, as evidenced by the fact that every day, thousands of Americans are diagnosed with preconditions. We hear about, is this not working? Nope. Oh, oh. Am I doing this wrong? Towards you. Towards you. Oh, there we go. Okay, so we hear about pre-dementia, we, pre we hear about pre-hypertension, we hear about pre-anxiety, and then we have stuff on the subclinical level, like subclinical osteosclerosis, subclinical hardening of the arteries, potentially linked to heart attacks. Potentially, by the way. And my, my personal favorite is subclinical acne. If you look up on any website, you'll find out that it's the easiest form of acne to treat. And you don't have the pustules, you don't have the inflammation, and you don't have the redness. And it's probably due to the fact that you don't have acne to begin with. And so I have, I have a name for all these conditions. It's actually another precondition. And it's that they're absolutely preposterous. In baseball, the game follows the pregame. The season follows the preseason. Pre but with all of these preconditions, that doesn't seem to be the case. There we go. So we have precancerous lesions, which often don't turn into cancer or develop into cancer. And we have osteoporosis, a bone thinning disease. And a new study came out and said that you would have to treat 270 women for three years in order to prevent one broken bone. And that's a lot of time and money allocated if you multiply by the amount of people that actually have this disease. And, and additionally, that these uh, are two. Additionally, these uh, prescriptions for these preconditions end up doing far more, far more harm than good. We spend over $2 trillion on healthcare each year and over 100,000 people, and this is a very conservative es estimate, I might add, that over 100,000 people each year in this country die not from the conditions that they have, but because of the medicine used to help treat these conditions. So everything in this country has become over-medicalized at some point. So a woman in the audience, I have some great news for you. After a set age, your whole life becomes medicalized at a point. Step one is when you hit puberty. You now have something that happens to you once a month that has to be medicalized, has to be treated. Step two is when you get pregnant. You have to have a high tech experience or a high maintenance experience to help prevent from something going wrong. And step three is menopause. We all know what happened when millions of women in this country were taking hormone replacement therapy to help combat menopausal symptoms. And then a huge study came out, NIH funded, National Institute of Health funded, and it said, hey, let's take a step back because this hormone replacement therapy may be doing a lot more harm than good. And what we need, and what we need to have this, okay, sorry. And I didn't want to leave any of the men out because we all have a universally fatal condition, pre-death. And the reason you're eligible for this is because then you have the risk factor for it, which is just being alive. And since I want to end things in a more happy way, let's say, if you all survive to the end of my talk, which hopefully will happen, then you will all be known as Previvors. Previvors <laughs> is a term for what a specific cancer advocacy group would like their members to call themselves if they do not have cancer yet, but they have the risk factor for it. So you are technically a Previvor. And so, 
uh, excuse me. And so we have a system that basically promotes this to a certain extent. We have selected that at every point of the system, we diagnose someone with a precondition and then eventually a condition. And so we need to look at the doctor-patient relationship first. Doctors, most of them, work for, for a fee-for-service basis, which means they're incentivized to do a lot more. They're incentivized to uh, prescribe medications, order tests, order procedures, and, and we're Americans, we just can't do something. We always have to do something. So we want to drug, they want to test, we want to be told, this is what you have, and this is how you're going to treat it. And if the doctor doesn't give you that, you just go somewhere else. And that's obviously not good for a doctor's business. And additionally, if you end up getting a condition, then the doctor doesn't order a test, they eventually get sued for medical malpractice. And then on the other hand, we have pharmaceutical companies that want to expand on these indications to make more people eligible for these preconditions, which would obviously help their bottom line. And then we have ad cancer advocacy groups, the ones that come up with pre who want to make people more and more worried about things that they might actually not have so, so they can raise visibility and raise funds. But this isn't all about blaming particular players in this game. What we need to understand is that this has almost become a societal problem and a lot of us are part of the contributing factor because uh, my father, he's an oncologist, hematologist, he, he means he studies cancer, treats cancer and blood disease. He went to medical school and he never learned or he never had a class on how to think skeptically or how not to diagnose tests or how not to order tests. So what we're seeing here is that this is, our system almost basically promotes this and it's, we're sort of creating a field of dreams almost in terms of medical technology because if we put an MRI in every hospital, more people will want to get MRIs, or more inclined to go get MRIs. If we put a robot in every hospital, people are more inclined to get robotic surgery. And it wasn't until I talked to my father about all these incentives that I finally realized how he himself was also a part of this problem. He medicalized every risk factor. He also wrote articles and put them up in medical journals. He commissioned articles, he wrote articles, and his intent wasn't to make people worry, but eventually that is what happened. So I'll also tell you another story about uh, my uncle. He, saw, he told me this around three months ago. He saw his intern, and his intern told him that something that anyone in this audience could have told him for free. And, but he paid this intern the special privilege for doing so. And the intern said, hey, you need to lose some weight. And so, and so he was right. My uncle had hypertension. It's a real disease, not pre-hypertension, actual hypertension, high blood pressure. And so it's a good thing that the intern said this. He didn't say, well, you have pre-obesity or pre-diabetes. He told him, hey, you gotta go work out, you gotta eat healthier, come back in a couple of weeks, we'll check on your progress, we'll help you get through this. And to me, that's a way forward, and that's something that we need to look at. So, Billy Bean ended up learning the same exact thing, that he eventually hired a kid who became very successful for him. This kid ended up becoming uh, one of his talent scouts, and he told him, the kid told Billy Bean, that you don't always want to look for the sluggers that swing for the fences, swing at every pitch. You want to look for the people that are be able, willing to let, let the ball go past and get a walk. Because getting a walk in baseball is the same thing, it's just as good as getting a hit. And that's what we need to look at in our medical system. If it's really a good pitch, or should we not, if we, or if we should just not uh, look at it and not swing at everything. Thank you.